Welcome to The Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. It's time for us to take you through the pages of the National Dailies. And uh, we have G.D. Johnson who joins the conversation. It's good to have you join us this morning, G.D. Johnson. Good morning, Messi. Good morning, Kofi. And good morning to all our viewers all over the world. Good morning, Mr. Johnson. Thanks for joining us. All right. Uh, let's take a look at the leadership newspaper this Friday morning. And uh, the attention would be on the top uh, caption or top banner. Uh, header this morning and the first is the adulterated fuel crisis blame game continues Q refuse to go away and a lot of persons are asking why up until this morning you still have cues in Lagos we're looking at the leadership newspaper this morning and President Muhammad Buhari still consulting on electoral bill presidency yes we're looking at the leadership newspaper and that's what you find and away from that you also have cbn bankers committee plan 200 billion dollar income from non-oil export so it feels like the conversation i and kofi has been having this morning the issue of revenue generation is big and uh you know the government will go any length to ensure that that happens 2023 presidency not not threatened by akiri dolu's warning and that's also another one you find, and just before we move away, NMPC Sahara Group flag of 17-kilometer road construction in a Edo state. Zulum 6, political solution to insurgency. These are the headlines on uh, the leadership newspaper. Let's head straight to the punch newspaper now with the following headlines. Or your bully on van robbers, Inugu gunmen, uh, kill five policemen, others. He has the following riders. Uh, Ibadan, motorcyclist, commuters shot. That's the punch newspaper. Uh, Ibadan, motorcyclist killed, commuters shot. Hoodlums cut away cash. Motorists flee. Uh, three policemen manning Inugu checkpoint killed. A POS man shot and a woman abducted. Really worrying um, stories uh, um, as far as uh, security in uh, the nation is concerned. We look at more stories from the Punch newspaper. At the top of that page, uh, front page, petrol transporters gradually halt operation over uh, low freight rates. And um, it's almost like adding insult to injury. Uh, details on page 22, petrol transporters gradually halt operations over low freight rates. More headlines from The Punch. Uh, CBN to stop forex sale to banks by December targets $200 billion non-oil exports and uh, only God knows where uh, the banks are going to get their USD from. Um, Electro bill, National Assembly carpets Malami over self-interest comment. Electoral bill, National Assembly carpets Malami over self-interest comments. And Rep Square's finance ministry for 17, point, or 17 billion Naira unapproved spending. You know, the amounts of money we're hearing, uh, we keep hearing in the, on the papers, uh, leaves you wondering. Um, Rep Square's, Square's finance ministry for 17 billion Naira unapproved spending. More from the punch. NNPC may spend 201 billion naira to clean 170.25 million liters of dirty fuel. Uh, oh my God. Interesting. Very interesting. NNPC may spend 201 billion naira to clean 170.25 million liters of dirty fuel. Uh, the writer to that story, Buhari orders service providers to compensate aggrieved fuel consumers. Reps demand MRS, Owando, others suspension, and NPC customs face probe. Stories or details of that on page 17. More from the punch. Quara PDP disagree over take on take of state buildings over debt. Rep remanded over 185 million naira 419 case bail application fails driver bags life jail for raping unilag women or society school people really sad one there presidency tamwell meets kaduna katsina stakeholders laments deep division students protest a suspect named as awaiting copper or should motorcyclist killed and finally ndla seizes two billion naira drug in containers from india at lagos these are stories coming 
on the front page of the punch. Let's move away from the punch newspaper this morning and uh, take a look at the Daily Independent. The banner caption reads, adulterated fuel suppliers must be held accountable. And that's according to the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. You have uh, three riders underneath. Tell foreign diplomats not to interfere in local politics. Reps probe NMPC. Son custom orders over bad petrol. And uh, you also have the Britannia U false inclusion in importation of toxic fuel. That's what you find. 2023 presidency. Songwo Olu urges APC leaders to unite for Tunubu. And 30,000 terrorists have surrendered to the military. That's what uh, Governor Zulem is quoted to say. NDLEA intercepts 40,250 kilogram codeine worth. 2 billion naira at ports, uh, that's the Lagos port. And Zamfar Assembly asks the Chief Judge to raise panel to investigate Deputy Governor. And uh, you also find God is raising young leaders to rewrite Nigeria's history. The PFN president is quoted on that. Buhari consulting over re-amended electoral bill, that's what the aide is quoted to say. And CBN targets $200 billion in Forex repatriation with five key anchors. And that's it on the Daily Independent. Well, let's uh, round things up with, uh, round things off rather, with a look at uh, the headlines on the front page of the Nation newspaper. Toxic petrol firms NNPC in raw as Buhari orders sanctions. Toxic petrol firms NNPC in raw as Buhari orders sanctions. It's uh, uh, interesting they, uh, the nation doesn't go with the term um, adulterated, but using the, the, the word toxic. Uh, it has the following writers. Consortium faults oil giants indictment. A president gives directive on compensation of victims. Another headline or more headlines from the nation, a newspaper. Lawmakers wrong to initiate electoral act amendment, says INEC. Lawmakers wrong to initiate electoral act amendment, says INEC. Banks lose access to CBN's forex cash. Uh, with the writers, RT 200 policy takes effect 2023. Diaspora remittances hit hundred million dollars per week it's quite interesting and uh, at the bottom of that front page MTN pays balance uh, for 5g license can APC factions to reconcile um, at the top of that front page Boko Haram's end is near says Zulum 30,000 terrorists surrender is the writer to that headline federal lawmakers angry over flight delays airlines to be summoned writer to that headline 18 Zamfara lawmakers vote for deputy governor sack. Details on page 7. NIA false ex AGF's claims on sacked AG DG. That's acting DG. Details on page 3. And uh, we have Niger to pay for information on terrorists. And finally, troops recover 2 million liters of crude. More of such stories. We have details. Um, inside the nation newspaper. Now turning our attention to uh, G.D. Johnson, a chief lecturer in the Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Mr. Johnson, quite interesting, uh, the headlines we're seeing coming um, on the front pages today. Um, let's start with uh, the, um, the security situation in some parts of the country uh, as uh, highlighted by uh, the Punch newspaper, um, the Oyo Bullion Van um, uh, heist. And we have uh, also in Enugu, we hear um, three policemen manning a checkpoint have been killed, a POS man shot. In New York, in your situation, two policemen lost their lives, uh, and one motorcyclist we call uh, Okada Ryder uh, also lost his life, unfortunately. Your thoughts on that? Well, it's, it's, it's an indication of what is wrong entirely with the political, economic, and social systems that we have, and the people are, are pressured. And when government does not meet the basic need of people. People are, are forced to engage in criminal in criminal acts. Um, when there's a collapse of the social, political, and economic system, the question you ask yourself is, how will a sane man go and um, attack the bullion plan and attack the bullion plan and think that uh, some it will not affect the the the, the the life of others that are surrounding that particular that particular is, is a story that we found ourselves in this situation. It's a sorry, it's a sorry state that you have 
people committing ice on the road and putting the lives of other people in danger, well, is a failure on the part of the the, 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 the organizations that are moving their money in providing adequate security for moving for movement of their money. That's one two. It's a failure on the part of the state in providing adequate security for people to go about transacting their business and people to go about their normal life. So it's a failure, it's a systemic systemic failure and I don't know, may the soul of those that lost their life unfortunately rest in perfect peace. And those that were involved in the crime, may the long arm of the law caught up with them and ensure that justice is done and we don't have this type of sorry situation and sorry situation in our country. All right, G.D. Johnson, let's also look at the issue of adulterated uh, fuel and the crisis surrounding it. According to the leadership newspaper this morning, the blame game continues and the queues refuse to go away. Well, you know, for the past three days, I've not driven my car. Um, I actually parked up, up in Onokada and then Nape to go to wherever I want to go because, one, I can't struggle to buy for it. I'm paying for this service. I, why should I struggle to, to to pay for services that someone is offering? It's 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 it's, it's unfortunate that um, they don't care about us, whether private and uh, business owners or even government. To if you buy the fuel, you go to traffic. So uh, he's suffering and smiling like fella, like fella said. And the playing game continues. Our outcome: we have different agencies of government. We are paying every every um, subsidy on these petroleum products. There are agencies of government that are meant to ensure quality control and to ensure that what comes in meets up with the standard. And the, there are various checks and balances. And the president is just ordering a given directive. Even before we got to this stage, some, some head will rule. Some should have accepted responsibility. In other crime, the Minister of Petroleum will have resigned. And the Minister of Petroleum in Nigeria is the president. The NNPC, the NNPC chairman will have resigned. But you have a situation whereby allegedly the NNPC chairman himself has a private operating company that are charged with responsibility of importing fuel. Now you see the blame game is going on because sanction has not been applied. What was expected that from, 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 from a normal administration, from a normal system is that on Monday, those that are caught people will have been sent on suspension. The NNPC <coughs> chairman will have gone on suspension pending investigation. <coughs> and all other agencies of government that are involved in the importation of petroleum products have gone on suspension. But since we are crude in our thinking, since we have a crude system, because God gave us one of the best crude oil, but we don't refine that crude oil, we export those crude oil to foreign countries, and then those ones will refine the product they determine the price which you pay for the crude oil, and then the refined product, they also determine the price which they sell the crude oil to us. And now, they determine both prices. We are at their mercy. And some people that are making money out of subsidy or no subsidy, because we don't even know true position, now are importing to Nigeria adulterated fuel. Some people are committing economic crime. They should go to jail. These are the people that EFCC should be going after. But you will not see EFCC going after this one. EFCC would rather be jumping into hotels, looking for yao yao boys, people that are just committing small infraction, small economic infraction, in fraud, defrauding people. I do not approve of that in any case. However, serious economic crime, crime against humanity, crime against the nation, you will not see EFCC. This type of issue now, I think is where EFCC should go in. But rather, they won't go into this one. They'll be looking for political cases because this is a serious economic crime. It's a serious economic crime. It's meant to destroy the economy of Nigeria. Whoever is involved is committing sabotage. And sabotage, such people that are involved in, in this in this, um, in this annual crime should be prosecuted because they are trying to bring down a government. You, you could allege that, that they are trying to bring down... Because if you collapse the economy of the nation, you collapse the politics, you collapse this, the, the society. What are you trying to do? Me, you are trying to me, cause Mr. confusion. Mr. Mr. Johnson, yeah. just to add to that, you know, um, the, the punch has today reported, is today reporting that um, the NMPC may, and uh, I hope we, we underline that word may, uh, spend 201 billion naira to clean 170.25 million liters of dirty fuel. Um, how, does that make, how does that make you feel? 
they, 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 they didn't have money to establish refinery. They have the, they have the resources of, of, of cleaning. What is the essence of, of the refinery? It's not to clean and process the crude oil into various um, products that we require. Now you see another avenue for them. They should dump the fuel somewhere else. You don't need it in Nigeria. Why would they clean it? Why would they spend money? You could see the game. You could see the cycle. The cycle of corruption. Now, the question, you know, Kofi, while I was talking, I said, what is this true situation about subsidy payment and subsidy removal? Nobody seems to know. The more you look, the less you see. It's an abracadabra situation. Now, they will spend that amount of money to clean the fuel. Who, on whose account? Who is paying for it? Yet government is complaining that they don't have resources. Let them go ahead with it. No, so, so, so one of the things is still very, I mean, constant is the fact that the queues have re refused to go away as being put out by the leadership. And that's the reality, because if you move me, around, you know, so, so yeah. because I'm asking in a sense, what, what would the people do now? What's going to happen? Because we also no. hear the NMPC saying that we're going to make this product available. And yes. then yeah, today night, I took, I took a gamble to drive, to drive out and I saw for, you know how much I bought it for? I bought it 190 per liter. 190 per liter. That's how much I bought the foil. Now let's come to to we as Nigerians. The people operating the first stations, the moment they hear any major rumor with respect to something affecting the supply chain of petroleum products in Nigeria, what happens? They shut down their station and they start selling one pump. If they have 20 pumps, if they have 10, if they have 6, if they have 5 or 4, they start selling one pump. That's not good. That's Nigeria. The supply we have in Nigeria, minus the adulterated form, is enough to serve us for the next one month. But being exploitative as we are, the government exploit the people. The business people in Nigeria also exploit the people. It is the downtrodden that suffers most in Nigeria. And you know the saying that says that when two elephants fight, it is the grass and herbs that suffer. Now, you ask yourself this question. What will come up upon a fuel station to start selling one, to dispensing fuel from one pump? We are at the agencies of government and agents of government that needs to go around and monitor whether these fuel stations actually have fuel and they are not dispensing to Nigerians. Now, the moment you hear any slightest rumor affecting the supply chain, we are at the mercy of private individuals operating their business and exploiting Nigerians, apart from government. And you see these people, today they will go to mocks to pray for Juma service. And on Sunday, you see them going to church on Sunday to pray to God and asking God to solve Nigerian problem. Asking God to intervene, not knowing that they are the devil themselves that need to change their mind and stop exploiting Nigerians. And I've said it. If it is by prayer, if it is by going to mocks or by going to church, Nigerians shouldn't have any problem. But unfortunately, um, we have more problems because the people themselves, we the Nigerian people, we are for, apart from the government, those operating their business and running their business. And every slightest opportunity want to exploit fellow Nigerians. And it's unfortunate. And you have PPMC, an agency of government under the presidency that should go around and monitor. And nobody is monitoring. I told you I paid 190. Some places they sold it 200. And nobody. And they, they are people that are selling for it. That's why you see the queue. Because if all these fuel stations are dispensing fuel from all their pumps, you won't see queue. Okay, Mr. Johnson, interesting. Um, I wish you had time to look at, into the fact that the, the authorities are lying to Nigerians. Um, starting with the Nigerian uh, midstream and downstream petroleum uh, regulatory agency that put out a statement uh, laced with lies, you know. Uh, for instance, telling Nigerians that methanol was a regular additive to fuel, but it's added in, in small quantities and all that. And, and I mean, we, we know it's not regular to add it, you know, in terms of the specification for Nigerian cars or cars in Nigeria. 
or telling Nigerians that you know you had a limited number of of um, of, of, of petrol affected when it was actually more than 300 million liters. Um, but we'll, we'll find time to talk about this some more in the future. But let's go back to the contentious reworked electoral bill that um, 11 days after being submitted to Mr. President's table, um, that green pen has not touched the white paper. Um, the signature embroidery has not been signed on it yet, 11 days. And what we're hearing in the papers, for instance, in the leadership newspaper and in the uh, um, the Daily Independent, is that uh, President Buhari is consulting over the electoral bill as far as um, uh, an aid is concerned, an aid revealed to the papers that he is consulting over uh, the electoral bill. This is coming from the Senior Special Assistant to the President on National Assembly Matters. Now, yesterday, Abubakar Mala Malami, the um, uh, Honorable Attorney General and Minister of Justice, who was the one who gave legal advice to the President the first time this um, amendment was passed and sent to the President, um, he said that um, the only reason why or if the bill is based on self-interest or selfish interest, then it will not be signed. Um, today we're hearing the punch, National Assembly carpets Malami over self interest comment or selfish interest comments. Uh, what, are, what are your thoughts on that? Because the elections are meant to hold on February 18, 2023. Let's, let's just oppose that with what INEC said um, in the nation newspaper. When INEC said it's wrong for lawmakers to initiate electoral bill amendment. Now, INEC is a major stakeholder, in fact, a critical stakeholder in the electoral act. Now, INEC is just waking up to tell us that it is wrong. What initiative did INEC make, or what presentation did they make to the National Assembly? There were public hearings with respect to this amendment. Do they make their representation and other critical stakeholders? Now, if someone says the president is consulting, the president is consulting who? The critical stakeholders in the democratic project of Nigeria are one, the lawmakers themselves, the political parties, the electorates, and INEC. Now, if you ask an average Nigerian, if you do an opinion poll, you do a straw poll, and then you see what's the view of an average Nigerian with respect to the passage of the electoral, electoral bill into an act of the parliament, with the president ascending to it. You know that majority of Nigerians are in support of it. If you ask the National Assembly members who are actually involved in it, they are interested in it. So you have two critical stakeholders. Who are other stakeholders? The party system. I keep asking myself questions. There's something dysfunctional about APC. APC controls the National Assembly. APC is the party in the presidency. Now, APC is the party in power. Now, it is APC-led National Assembly that passed the Electoral Act in the first instance. The president did not assent to it. It is APC-led National Assembly that passed the amendment listening to comments left, right, and center. Now, the president and the attorney general is saying that the president consulting, the media is saying the president is cons consulting who? And then the attorney general that should advise the president with respect to providing a legal framework for us having an election in 2023 and not use a document that was passed in 2011 to run an election in 2023. That is saying that they are doing it for we, 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 we know the government. We know the governors are also interested in this and have uh, you know paid visits to Asso Rock as well. Uh, maybe that could be another block. Even APC governors are, are opposed to to some clauses in the rework bill. And then, that's why that's why I said something is dysfunctional with APC as a party. There's what is called if you look at the party structure of any political party. There's what is called the national caucus of the party. The national caucus is made up of the leadership of the national assembly, the president. Um, the president, governors elected on the platform of the party. That's the national caucus. Now, the question you ask yourself, I think governors from each of the geopolitical zones, the question you ask yourself is produced by the party. When was the first time or the last time APC had their national caucus to harmonize their interest so that they all work in tandem with one purpose and we will go. The National Assembly will not be going in the wrong direction. The governors will not be going in another direction and the presidency will not be going in another direction. So we see that it's, it's like they are a rudderless ship without direction. And as a result of that, they are creating chaos and confusion for Nigeria with respect to the passage of the... You, I, I, I still can't comprehend, and I, I'm not yet been able to come to terms with the fact that the electoral, the, the signing, the assent of the president to electoral act 
will be dramatized this long. Whatever inputs the president wants to make, he has it into the National Assembly. He's like an officer to the House of Rep and to the Senate. Now, they could have passed in whatever input the presidency want to put into the electoral act before we get to this stage of this drama. And then the attorney general could have related with the National Assembly on this matter. And the National Assembly could have sent the bill to the office of the, 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 the attorney general for his input before they actually passed the bill so that they harmonize all of this. But what do we have? It's an enlightened self issue. It's not even a light self-interest. Self Mr. Johnson, we, we have uh, about 369 or 368 days um, um, till, till the elections in 2023. Um, you know, we just about have about eight um, uh, days before we get into, or seven days rather, before we get into the 18th of February. INEC needs to release the electoral timetable. Uh, do, you, do you suspect that it may not happen? This bill may not be signed in time. And Anak may say, well, we've been waiting, nothing is done, so we can't use this new law. We'll have to kick it down the road till the next election. Those that come up with representative democracy and the system of government that will practice ensures that in such a situation there are checks and balances. If the president did not sign the bill, why can't the National Assembly override the president with a two-third majority across? Why? That's the principle of checks and balance. Why can't they? Why can't they override the president's veto? Do they have, if, if they really love Nigerians, and if they truly believe in the bill that they've passed, they should override the president with a two-third vote, and then let's have an enabling law that guides the election. All right, G.D. Johnson, uh, thank you so much for your thoughts this morning. Always an interesting time listening to you share your thoughts on some of these national issues. We look forward to having more of you on the show. Uh, we appreciate your time as always. Thank you, Messi, and thank you, Kofi. Have a wonderful weekend. And that's the size of the package for the Off the Press. We'll definitely return with Off the Press on Monday. We will be taking a look at what happened today in history, being the 11th day of February. And when we return, will be time for a first major conversation where we look at women, girls in science and technology. Please stay with us.